We're on. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today for the April meeting of the Java User Group. I want to thank Brent Shambaugh for speaking with us today on Gremlin. Uh, he just uh, emailed the steering committee meeting and said, hey, I'd like to give a talk. We said, great. We love it that way. When people up and volunteer, then we don't have to go out asking for volunteers. So thank you for uh, being willing to come do this today. We want to also thank Techlahoma for sponsoring the Java User Group. And Techlahoma is a nonprofit volunteer-run organization that puts on 33 groups, two conferences, and sponsors free local events. They also sponsor, sponsor uh, quite a few user groups here in Oklahoma City, and we're thankful for that. I uh, want to mention about the annual 200 OK conference that's coming up in May, May 18th. Uh, the call for sponsors is open now, and if you'd like to uh, buy tickets and come to that or be a sponsor for that, I'm sure they would welcome that. Um, I uh, want to mention about Starspace 46 that lets us use the uh, facility here for our event meetings. I want to thank them for that. And if you would like to donate to Techlahoma, you can go to donate.techlahoma.org slash membership and uh, donate there if you would like. We're on Twitch, which is where we're streaming right now, twitch.tv. And, and basically that's all I have to read off of here. Okay. So I want to thank you guys for coming, and I'm not going to hold it up any longer, so we'll turn it over to Brent. Thank you, Brent. Oh, Brent Square. My, my name's also Brent. It's strange. Okay. But, uh, but I'm, I'm the Brent with the S. What, what would you say your last name was? Wilkins. Wilkins. Okay. Brent with the W. Okay, so I mentioned this weird thing called Gremlin. You're, you're probably wondering what it was. Is it, is it the Gremlin that shows up at the movies? You know, the, the Gremlin that, you know, that gets thrown in the paper shredder because they try to kill him and he invades some tower in New York City and they just think it's awesome. You want to do that? No, it, it's, it's not that or, or cute little furry Gremlins that, that kind of are fun to pet. Nothing about this. This actually has to do with graphs. Uh, so, more or less talking about a graph like this. Uh, okay, so it has a vertex and it edges. And why would I even go down here? Well, originally, I was looking at this at my previous job. I was over in Europe and talking to some people, and he said, okay, well, we're, we're doing this protocol. And we're going through this graph, why don't you look at Gremlin? Well, Gremlin is a path transversal language on a graph. So it would, it would travel from a vertex to an edge that just kind of walked the graph. But the interesting thing I said, well, I wasn't, I wasn't sure what, what interest here would be, but I thought, okay, well, I heard something about this being applicable to SQL. So what you could do is you won't have to really write the SQL syntax. You could just write some functional programming and the gremlin way of doing things. I'll, I'll get into that. What it actually could be in a multiple different languages, not just Java. Uh, but what the kind of goal is and what I thought, well, let's make this talk worthwhile is you can go from things like joins, and, and you can do a transversal. So when you're transversing, transversing a graph, something with a join that you, you would do in Postgres, so that shows us, <laughs> I'm just playing around with Postgres in this talk. I've never messed with Postgres before, so apologize if it's not perfect, but I, I think it worked. Uh, so, okay, so what you need to do, if, you, if you're going to think about Gremlin in terms of a relational database, is you're gonna have to have some sort of schema. But I, I tried to, they have this example graph. So, so Gremlin's actually a part of a thing called Apache Tinkerprop. Uh, you can actually go to this website if you if you want to see it. It kind of has these these cute characters. It's nice animation. 
and it talks about graphic computing and it has all these little parts. But what we're really thinking about is how we're going to write a query language. So I, I have these vertices, uh, different color coded. So there's this kind of this orangish one, has an ID, his name is Marco. So on your vertex, you're gonna have certain pieces of data for that vertex. And okay, so you can go for like number one to number three. So okay, so you have a, uh, a actually a vertex table and then a vertex for, for, uh, for software. So you could say, okay, well Marco created a piece of software. And then you can, then you can also have information in that table, and then a third table could be some sort of relationship, and you could have some sort of weight, and you could add some other attributes to it. So this kind of clear uh, what's, what's going on. So uh, excuse me, I messed that up. Okay. Um, so, so you have a graph, and you have you have tables for both the edges and for the vertices. And they can have different flavors. And, well, I said that you needed some sort of schema. Well, there's this thing called uh, SQL LG. So uh, it's actually, yeah, it was actually a way to take the, whatever's in Tinkapot, that kind of, that kind of language in Gremlin and translate it to relational database management. So he, he developed his own schema for doing that, and the best way that I've found thus far to access that is actually go through the code. There's probably better ways of this. I, I can demonstrate this, and uh, my clips have that fired up, so live coding, here we go. Uh, and mm, I kind of proved that to myself. I, I was experimenting and just was like, okay, well, yeah, okay, I just try to create the databases and have it automatically. Yeah, you need a schema, okay. So, okay, so when you're thinking about Gremlin, well, I, I said it was a functional, functional way of doing things. So you can have different, there's a, there's a thing called a step, the step graph transversal. So you, you take certain steps, you have certain attributes on that. And so you might do mapping, so you might do a one-to-one, -one, you might do a flat map. So you might have like a one-to-many relationship. So you have one thing, you get more of things. Um, I'll get into that, and then, or, you, or you have a filter, so you, you, wanna, you wanna take certain things out, or you have a, like a side effect, you're, so you're thinking about sort of in the terms of a Java 8's kind of stream way of doing things. So you're going from one thing to another, you're processing data on that pipeline. Um, there's actually a part of a called pipes, incidentally. Um, and then branch, so you're just gonna take some sort of stream and you split it up and do something different with it. Um, haven't messed with those. And so, and again, I said it could, it could be implemented in other things uh, besides Java, so you can have uh, function composition, so you just kind of chain it like that with the dots, or you have something nested within each other with a function nesting. Um, you can read more about that online the docs. Um, so what if I did wanted to do like kind of a basic select query? Uh, so I had it written out here. I warned you, I, I, <laughs> then I do some live coding. So I actually reference that. So, so basically what you're doing is you're, you're, you're taking all the vertices here and you're just saying, okay, well, I want all vertices with just the, this is the person. So I'm filtering things out from all the vertices, and then I'm kind of, and then I'm doing a mapping. So, like I said before, for the edges, you're going to have names and ages for that. So that's going to return all of that information. Uh, so, yeah. So I think this is it. Can you hear me?
Thanks, Kimberly. Uh, okay, so this is how you to set this up if you if you wanted to use the Gremlin way of doing things a fast transversal and you wanted to set it something up in your Postgres database. So first I have to connect to the database and then I then I add things to it and I commit it. And this is actual the meat and potatoes down here. So I didn't actually run this. And I don't have it set up where I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know if you can kind of see it. Okay, so this actually has a little bit of replication in there. I can get rid of that with a uh, with adding a dedupe to it. Uh, so you just only get one because it, what it's doing is it's actually crawling around and saying, okay, here's here's one thing, here's another thing, here's another thing, and here's another thing, and just keep adding it to it. But you can say, okay, well, if you just saw one of those, just you know, just keep one. Uh, at least that's how I understand it. Um, okay. So, and then, um, and then I can also, okay, be, be a little bit more specific. I can just say, okay, well, how would I do select name? Well, so I just I just add another step, to, another mapping to that, and just add name to list. And this is this is kind of building up, I hope, to a kind of a grand finale. Uh, and then, okay, well, I wanted to select the name of an age, or okay, so <laughs> then more functional. So so you're actually doing another select query, but you're looking at what the length of the name is. Okay, well, so you're passing that in, but then you're passing that into a mapping which then converts that object to a string, uh, and then gives it to a list. Or, uh, or here, here's the actual dedupe step. So if, so if I put it, that on there, then I wouldn't get the duplication. Okay, so so I'm just getting two values, even though there's there's actually a whole ton of them in the database because they're uh, or or the same thing. I maybe I just want to get the maximum of those two values, which is five, five. Okay, five and four. Uh, and then I can do certain um, conditions. So, so can I have, can I have a has step? So, um, what I said, there is a map, a flat map, a filter, a side effect. Well, each each one of these kind of fit in these categories. Um, so, filter. So, we're actually taking it, filtering it by person, and then we want to say, okay, continually we also have a attribute on that vertex that I have an age of thirty five. And then I want to do my value map, which is just name and age. And that gives me my select query. Uh, or not equal. Okay, so um, okay, so, so this P here. There there's a thing you can work with called the Gremlin shell. So if you go through the tutorial, if you're interested. And this getting started with the gremlin, they will actually go through a shell that you can work through, and you can do these examples. And you can be working with this modern graph, which is, so I'm using, and it's actually going to be using Groovy. So there's a little bit of syntactic difference. So I, I, I try to do my best to just have it with uh, to work with Java. So that P had any be in there. Uh, or you can also say between. Or 
can say something not equal, so you just do a likes. Uh, so you actually, you can chain these hases. They're, they modify. And, okay, so you can also do the ordering. So what Gremlin has is it, it has an order and then it has a thing called a modifier. So you, that's where you can actually feed in the logic of what you wanted to order it by. You need to do a, send, a, a decrementing or a s incrementing. Also set a limit, so I only want pi values. And this, this is a kind of a stream, it's a pipe. But there's values passing through this, and I can make modifications as I'm doing it. So if, if you were playing with Gremlin, you just say, okay, well, uh, maybe I don't want the limit. So you can actually take that out and see what happens. It's, it allows for a lot of experimentation. Or, okay, so it actually, with this grouping thing, I can have two side effects out of there. So I can take it by name. So I can do this sum within the age. And okay, and then I want values of age. And I want, I want to sum those all together. <laughs> So I had a case where I had so many replications, so we had the age of like 3,000 years old, so it was like, I should have put Yoda in there. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, actually, it happened. It's maybe one thing that got corrupted. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so people are 210 years old, 260 years old. People don't age that much. It must be a different planet. Okay. But you see the, the output is like you get with a SQL query. And it's actually hitting a SQL database underneath. Um, do you actually have that? Oh, okay, so you can actually see my databases right here. Uh, what was the thing that I had, person? So that's actually all my data. So it's underneath, it's doing this schema, but it's also writing to the database underneath. So, that, Or we actually have the thing for I said V, that's V for vertex. E, I think I had created. So these are actually these IDs and that's the relationship between the two. So it's, it's in a way it's pooling from the SQL database to get this value. So you can get the same end effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, So selecting by weight, this column, and finally the big crazy business. Uh, so this this big join. Let me throw this into Postgres and see, and just prove it to myself again that it actually worked. Yep, 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 yep. And all right, I think I had multiple in there. I was just playing around with this. And I think it's the last one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it, it's just, it's returning a list, so it's a little bit different. But it's the same, same data. So this is kind of a functional way of doing SQL queries. And you could do it in JavaScript, you could do it in Java, Python, I think. Um, if, you, if you wanted to find out more of that, uh, there's 
certain graph systems that you could use, but this is for SQL. And if you wanted to find out more about SQL queries, including some pretty crazy ones, you can see SQL to Gremlin. And they have some things that are pretty nutty. It's like you could do a, a query like this. But if you're thinking, I don't turn those to Gremlin. It would be that way. And kind of one advantage of this is you don't have to worry about writing your query syntax. You can just stick to your language. All right, I, I think that's about it. Are there any questions? Okay, so it was actually was using Postgres underneath, but it has a schema that allows it to think about in terms of graph-based thinking. So you're you're actually on, on the top. You're thinking about. transversing a graph like this. So I might be selecting all the vertices of a person, for example, that be anything in the table. And so that that's Gremlin. Gremlin can only, Gremlin doesn't have a schema or anything. Uh, it's the only way it can really work with a relational database is if you write a certain schema for it and then map that over to the Tinker Pop, the Gremlin kind of logic. Yeah, a little fuzzy too. Uh, okay. Okay, so there's. Okay, <laughs> from what I understand is Gremlin's the transversal language part, but there's other parts of it that, like, okay, so this is the pipes and this is Rexter, for example. So Rexter might just have the thing of just going out and connecting to something and getting it for you. Uh, there's, uh, there's Okay, so there, there's different levels. Uh, I'm gonna get into the weeds for sure. So I, I guess what I'm really concerned about is the the pipes and the, the gremlins of the pipes is the uh, processing of the information and the gremlins are traversing it. Okay. I don't think I really know the answer to your question. Maybe you need help. Okay, thanks. Okay, so there's any other questions? Okay, well, well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Thank you. Thanks, Brent. All right, well, thank you for coming.